What's going on guys? Bustle Be6 here, Veteran Video, and today we're here for another collection update video for you guys. I know we get a lot of collection update videos lately, but gotta do something to pass the time since the holidays are, you know, <clears throat> just chugging on through. I might as well get some albums while I can. And this uh, this video might not go as long because I do only have six albums, three of them are actually from the same man. But I might go on maybe one or two little tantrums or uh, tandems here and there. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into these albums. Danzig. Danzig 4P. This is the fourth studio album from Glenn Danzig's solo career. And this came out in 1994 on America Recordings. And I did get his first three albums, his self-titled uh, Lucifuge and War How the Gods Kill. Now, this is a kind of different album in the Antic entire discography. Whereas <clears throat> the first one was more straight ahead heavy metal with some more hard rock moments. The second one being more blues metal. And the third one being more sludgy and a little doomy. This one is where Danzig started to incorporate the more industrial metal and still maintaining that atmosphere that How the Gods Kill, where they left off on the How the, Gal How the Gods Kill in terms of atmosphere. And <sighs> there's some good stuff on this album. I'm not going to deny there's some really, really, really damn good stuff on this album, like Brand New God, Going Down to Die, Until You Call in the Dark, Dominion, Bring Your Death. I don't mind the pain, the huge standout on this album. But you got some weird tracks like Son of the Morning Star, Can't Speak, which was one of the uh, so singles on this album, and uh, Sadistical, like, that's a stupid-ass title. It's so weird. It's such a weird, weird, weird album. And in terms of all the Danzig albums, it's one of the weaker ones in my personal opinion. Like, it doesn't hold up to the first three but there's some really superb stuff on this album. It just it just doesn't light a candle to some of the earlier stuff on this album. Plus, it's got uh, parental advisory for explicit content. Oh, no, they said shit and fuck on this album. Oh, God, think of the children. So, yeah, I don't know why, but it is what it is. So... Again, it's not a terrible album, and won't be as it's not as bad as the album that follow this, Black Acid Evil, which dear god that album is bad. But yeah, it's one of the weaker dancing albums in my personal opinion. But I give it a I still give it a mild recommendation. Alrighty, this is all the three albums I have from the same band, and it's from Dismember. First one I got is Hate Campaign. This is their fifth studio album that came out in 2002 after 1997's Death Metal. And, yeah, this is the 2023 Nuclear Blast remaster. And, again, I need to dive deep into <laughs> this member. Maybe one day I'll, I'll dive into their discography and do a ranking of them. But I do hear they're, like, one of the best death metal bands. Not only just in Sweden, but just in death metal in general. And, you know, there's some solid songs that, on this album, like Bleeding Over and Death's Cold Embrace, the Thanatology, uh, Enslaved to Bitter Darkness, Suicidal Revolution, uh, Revelations. You know, there, there's like some, like some pretty decent songs on this album, but again, I'll have to check this out on my own time. And then you have the follow-up to that, 2004's Where the Iron Crosses Grow. And more to say, again, this is a... <clears throat> 2023 Nuclear Blast remaster. And again, I'll have to dive into this one. The album artwork actually looks pretty unique, if you ask me. And, you know, there's some, you know, some solid looking songs like Tyler Track, Tragedy of the Faithful, Chasing the Serpent, Were Dead, Were Angels, Fear to Trend, uh, As the Coins Upon Your Eyes, Children of the Cross. There's some pretty, um, pretty solid looking songs on this album. But again, I'll have to check it out on my own time. And finally, I have their, today, their latest studio album, 2008's self-titled album. The only one I'm really missing out of this entire, uh, out of their entire discography in terms of full length is The God That Never Was that came out in 06. And they did have that at the record store, but I'm going to wait to get that one. And yeah, this is, uh, again, another Nuclear Bass reissue that came out in, uh, this year. 
Again, I'll check this out on my own time, but it does look pretty solid. And, you know, a couple of, a couple of years after this, they did split up, but they would reunite in 2019. And there's rumors that they may be releasing some new material. And if it's anything like the first two albums, I'll be more than happy to check this out. But, you know, there's some pretty solid looking tracks like Death Conquers All, Under a Blood Red Sky, uh, Combat Fatigue. To end it all, Dark Death's Black Sun. Like, there's some pretty solid looking tracks. <clears throat> but again, it's an album I'll check out my own time. But, you know, I got this member, so yay me. So, yeah, I don't really know too much about these albums, but, you know, post down in the comments what you guys think about these albums. And, uh, yeah, I think I got some solid stuff here. Iron Maiden, Senjutsu. This is the latest studio offering from these British heavy metal icons. Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh boy. This was an album that they decided to release in 2021. My thoughts on this album have not really changed all too often. Considering that when this album came out, I was really, 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 really anticipated as to what the sound was going to be going into it because, you know, I love their classic album. If you guys have seen my retrospective, it was kind of a pain in the ass too because there were 16 albums of this stuff. But man, it was, um, let's just say it was, or well, 17 albums, I apologize. There was some, there was some anticipation going into this album because I was really, really wanting to check this album out. And when this album dropped, I was merely disappointed in it. You will talk about one of the most disappointing albums. Look no further than this because this is, was this over 71 minutes of some decent tracks and literally nothing else. Like, I, I don't understand how this album gets so much praise when it's the same damn thing that this band has released ever since 2000. Like, I, I don't understand how so many people literally circle jerk this band for saying it's one of the best string of albums of all time. It's got nothing, nothing on their creative or on their original stuff. Like this has got nothing on peace of mind, power slave, um, nothing on Summer in Time. Hell, it has got nothing on Fear of the Dark. And I know a lot of people are going to probably, you know, shoot me down in the comment section. I really don't give a damn. It's my opinion. This band, I feel like, it, it feels like they don't know what the hell they're doing. Like, I really, really, really don't. And it sucks because, one, the album artwork looks badass and the back of it looks really cool, too. And you look in the inside of it. Look at this. Look at this. This looks awesome. This looks amazing. And you would think the album would kick ass as well. Nope. It's the same damn tripe we've been listening to since Brave New World. I don't get it. When I first listened to the first single, The Rain on the Wall, it was about six minutes long. I'm like, okay, this sounds really damn good. And lo and behold, it was a really damn good song with a really nice music video. And then the first two tracks were the title track of Chicago. Really, really, really damn good stuff. Yes, the title track is like eight minutes long, but I was there for the journey with it. And then Lost and a Lost World happened, and I immediately stopped listening to the album afterwards. I the day that this album came out, I remember vividly, I remember vividly sitting in my living room or in my dining room and I think I was doing homework at the time and I nearly fell asleep to this album twice listening to it because of ungodly boring this album was in some spots and my god I don't understand why the hell is a nine and a half minute track on disc one when you have three ten minute tracks on disc two I don't get it. If the first half, if disc one was just six songs and nothing else, I'd be 100% fine with it. You could have put Lost in a Lost World at the final end of it. But no, 
That is not what they did here. There's only one track that's only four minutes long. And it's one of the best songs on the, it's the only good song on the entire album in Days of Future Past. That is a damn good song. And I really, really, really love that track. But my God, the pacing on this album is so ungodly slow. Old people have sex faster than this album. I mean, it, I mean, I'm repeating myself for what I said on a matter of life and death. But folks, it is that ungodly sluggish. Do we really know you to go into the final three songs? Not necessarily. Death of the Celts is so pretentious. Like it, like the last three tracks are pretentious as hell. Like if you wanted to stick with the Senjutsu theme, why didn't you do that? Like again. The album artwork looks fucking incredible. I love this. I love the album artwork. I don't like the album. It's a complete bore and a half. The production is thin as hell. There's no energy. If you actually play on this album on YouTube and you do the play speed twice, this album sounds a lot more energetic and sounds a lot faster than it actually is. <laughs> I wanted to give this album a chance. Six years after the Book of Souls, which was not great, but it was one of the finer albums of the band's entire catalog at that point of their career, and it feels like a complete step back into where they were, and I, I, I question everything that went to the making of this album. Kevin Shirley sucks as a producer. I don't care what anyone says. Steve Harris, I respect the hell out of what you've done for this band, but for the love that all is good. Please make an album that doesn't take over 70 goddamn minutes to do. I beg of you, unless it's good material, don't make albums like this. You want to have a good album artwork? Pick up a flag and pick up a poster and walk out the other way. Not really recommended in my opinion. So, <clears throat> after getting a little heated about that, the final album. Ozzy Osbourne, Ordinary or Ordinary Man. This is the, I want to say, the 12th studio album. Let me check here. Yes, the 12th studio album from Ozzy's solo career. Oh, good God almighty. Look, I've stated before in the past, and I've stated before when I got his other albums. Ozzy should have retired after 1980, uh, 1995. You want to do this Sabbath reunion album? Fine, go for it. Whatever tickles your gooch, I don't give a damn. Ever since Osmosis, which wasn't great, it has gotten worse and worse and worse for Ozzy. This man would simply not quit. I don't know how much more this bastard could take before he eventually goes limp on stage. This dude's in his 70s and he's going out there with Parkinson's disease, doesn't know where the hell he's at, and doesn't know how to sing 90% of the time. Hell, people call Alice Cooper old as hell, and he is, he's battled his demons in the past, but he's gotten over it, and he still has a voice, and he still has the songwriting, where this album doesn't. This is more pedestrian than old people looking for butterscotch. I swear to God, this album is such a damn drag from start to finish. There's no motivation. There's no creativity behind this album. There's no energy. Ozzy sounds like he doesn't want to even be there. The production overproduced as hell. And half these songs are some of the most generic songs I've ever heard. Like, <coughs> like maybe Under the Graveyard is okay. Ordinary Man, the title track, features Elton John, of all people. And he even couldn't even save that. But... Like, Scary Little Green Man, All My Life, Eat Me. Like, these songs are not good. But, oh boy, the creme de la crop on this album features rappers. I'm not even kidding. It features rappers on this album. Post Malone on the final end on the song It's a Raid. And not only that, the bonus track not, a, not even features Post Malone, but also world, world, world renowned, you know, concert apologist Travis Scott. Oh boy, 
Why? Why? This is worse than when Busta Rhymes was on Ozzy's album. I think, what was his last album, Scream, that Busta Rhymes was on? Like, Jesus Christ, like, take the piss out of <clears throat> when Ice-T was on Black Sabbath's Forbidden album. At least Ice-T is a metal fan, and he has a metal band, Body Count, which, by the way, kicks a lot of ass. This is so pedestrian, it's not even funny. And I did not care for Patient Number 9. I thought that album was more the same as this, but somehow a little bit worse. Ozzy, you need to hang it up, man. I respect you for what you've done. I respect you for help being behind Black Sabbath, the band that created heavy metal. But dude, you need to you need to hang it up. It's long past your time. You need to hang it up. I don't recommend this album at all. This album sucks. So yeah, folks, my voice is basically gone after going on those two tirades. What would you guys think about this? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting a lot of views because the ring down and went on a kind of a rant with this one. So, folks, what did you guys think about this? Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you guys leave a like, leave a comment, tap that big subscribe button, and tap the bell so when I upload, you guys will be notified. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Most importantly, join the herd. Talk to you guys in the next video. Peace out.